Hey, Blue Collar Ben here. So we've got a mess of wires hanging here behind me. This is at a friend of mine's place that he's having uh, wired and built. And I just wanna walk through and kinda of check out a few different things with the rough and wiring and just kind of observe how they are doing, the electricians at this point in the process. So you can see how they've kinda of just loosely gathered all of the runs back here at where the main panels are going to be. On the end of each one of these cables, they've written what the what each uh, particular run is for. So that's kind of how you do it. You just kind of gather all of your wires and pull them back to your main panel area, and then you work with them all later once you're ready to actually hang the panels up and get that panel wired in. And what we're just gonna kind of observe is the way they kind of pulled the wires through and the way they kind of ran them through the uh, the floor joists and through the walls themselves and just kind of see the way that that was thought through. So you can see the way that they are running these wires through the ceiling here. Looks a little bit disorganized, but there's actually an important thing to note with that. Whenever you're pulling wires, you don't want to bundle them tightly together. So if you, they were to run all of those wires in like close proximity, that could actually be an issue with bundling with excessive heat buildup in those wires. So having them go on separate routes is actually a good thing, especially when they all come close together here. You want to do uh, what you can to spread them out in a logical manner. So working down from the top plate right here, they've drilled a hole through there. Looks like a three quarter inch hole is kind of the standard size. And then they're just simply stapling the wires going down to their respective boxes. And you can run up to two cables typically through one hole like they're doing right there. And this is on a two by six wall and that is doing the same thing. Right here is another example of coming through the top plate and uh, you can see how they drilled an additional hole when they needed to pull a third wire. And then those come down here and they're using a multi-cable staple. These multi-cable staples are nice uh, because they allow the, the wires to be spaced out in such a way that they are not considered to be bundled. And that way they can dissipate any heat that may build up uh, versus if they were stacked right tight together. And we can see in this box that they have this already uh, roughed in and ready to go. They have their two hot wires that they're gonna be switching and then the neutrals and the remaining hots and the grounds are all just tied together there in the back of the box. Speaking of boxes, they're just using kind of a plastic material box. I personally like these better than fiberglass, but let me know in the comments below if you prefer fiberglass over plastic or what your preference is. You also notice that the boxes that they're using are fairly deep, and that is important just for being able to manage your wiring inside of that box much more effectively. Don't go with the really shallow ones. Right here we have a box that's gonna have a bunch of what looks like to be three-way switches in it. Uh, this is all, um, a lot of these are 14 threes and some of them are 14 twos. And that's a lot of cables to manage inside of one box. You can see they are utilizing the multi-cable staples in this application as well. And then uh, going up here, there's some thermostat wire there. Going up here, you can see where they went through the top plate. They did actually run, it looks like three cables through that hole right there it's probably not going to cause any sort of issues and uh, let me know let me know in the comments if you guys run more than two cables through a hole typically maybe that hole's drilled out a little bit bigger i'm not totally sure but some level of common sense is necessary of course especially when you think of like the typical lighting load is not going to be all that heavy it's also intermittent usage you're not going to leave lights on all the time so Probably not a big deal. And over here they have some ICF, insulated concrete forms, and uh, they have a freezer, refrigerator, dedicated circuits there on 12-2 uh, wire, for, so for a 20 amp circuits. And then it looks like they just have some general receptacles down here. So you can see how they're dropping all the way down and then going into the receptacle and then going back up and over and down and repeating that process going down, down this way. Not exactly sure why you would go up and then over and then back down, uh, seems like to me that you could have went horizontally, but maybe that's to avoid those plastic ribs that are in there. I'm not really sure. Now in here we have some uh, canned lights and just kind of interesting to look at it. You can see where the light, uh, the wire is anchored over here, uh, right on this uh, wood here. And then it comes up, loops up a little bit and goes into the light fixture itself and they did the same thing on that side and that's exactly how I did it or how I do it and that gives you a little bit of flexibility so that you can actually move that light fixture back and forth. Not that you're really gonna do that very much 
uh, long term, but it gives a little bit of flexibility. I believe that those just need to be, uh, the wires need to be anchored within approximately 12 inches of the light fixture. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe within 12 inches of a metallic fixture uh, or box and eight inches within or within eight inches for a plastic box. So when the wires come out here, you want to make sure that you're you're anchoring them within eight inches with plastic or 12 inches with metal. Now here's kind of a cool um, way of doing this. You can see we have a thermostat wire of some kind or just a control voltage wire and they've used just a regular old mud ring uh, to have a nice spot for that to be cut around for the drywall uh, guys to have that opening. Instead of just having the wire sticking out of the wall, they'll cut that out when they install the drywall. Now I have seen low voltage uh, boxes as well, but this might be more cost effective, I don't know. Here we have another um, big bundle of wires kind of that's coming down and using the multi-cable staples. And it comes down into this uh, switch box here. This is on an exterior wall, so they're using the type of box that has uh, seal, basically a sealing gasket around the outside that prevents air leakage coming through this exterior wall into the into the building. So those are important to use on your exterior, especially if you're going to be using like regular fiberglass insulation. If you're using spray foam, it's not as critical because the spray foam will totally seal that wall cavity up. Uh, but those are definitely a good product. You can see here's another one down here just for a regular receptacle. Then for our horizontal wires going across here, you can see how they've just drilled their holes. It looks like we're approximately a foot above the top of the box. We have the top of the box and then about a foot up is where our uh, where our holes are being drilled horizontally. It looks like about two feet up off of the ground. But I don't think they probably line up perfectly. You can pretty much just eyeball those. My perfectionist tendencies don't allow me to do that, so I always have to measure and drill all my holes at, this, at the same level. Oh, one, one reason to do that though, is that uh, later on, if you're living in the house that you built or wired or whatever, you know that you have all those wires running at exactly two feet horizontally, then you can kind of watch out for those if you're ever having to drill a hole or uh, whatever, you know, not to avoid that two foot height. Here's a, another set of cables coming down. This is a different brand of multi-cable staple. I will link to all the different, uh, access, some of the different accessories that I mentioned in this video. So I used those at my place and they worked quite well. You can see how this uh, switch is all ready to go. Uh, they've taken, let's see what we get, what do we have here? It looks like they've redesignated um, this white wire and possibly as a hot. I'm not really sure what the orange tape would be for otherwise. Uh, so these, there's a number of these wires here that have been redesignated with orange tape. So I really don't know for sure what they have going on here, but uh, we know for sure that these two wires here are hot for a three-way switch. And then this uh, possibly is hot. I, I don't really know, to be perfectly honest, unless it's just the neutral um, being marked for some reason. One thing I don't prefer is the way they took and see this black wire, how they wrapped it super tight around there. Uh, theoretically, you want to avoid really tight bends in your wires because it could create hot spots or uh, whatever in the wire. In all reality, that's probably not a big deal. I've never really seen too much of an issue from it, uh, but let me know your opinion down below. You can also see how the grounds are all nicely tucked uh, way towards the back of this, which is good. So the grounds are in the very back. Looks like the hots are right in front of that and the neutrals are kind of all in the same general spot there. Here's another good concept to point out. You have uh, what looks to be in here, I believe there's gonna be a bed right here. And then there's also bedside lights that are pre-wired into the walls. So always consider that as well as considering to add uh, light switches for those lights if you want. At my place I did add switches for each of the bedside lights. And also adding a box at about this height right here is super convenient, assuming it's far enough out past the headboard. And what that allows you to do is plug things in like your phone or whatever without having to reach down behind the nightstand. So just a tip if you're thinking about designing uh, the lights and wiring behind your bed. And in here we have just a more recessed lighting in all these rooms. I like the recessed lighting that they're using. It looks to be pretty nice to me. And right here in the middle we have a 
uh, box. It looks like it's designed for the ceiling fan, and I think I kind of like the look of this box. You can see how it's got the deeper cavity here on the right, and then it's like really shallow, uh, basically just like a flat box almost that's connecting right to that 2x4. And that seems like a really good way to have a really stable piece of lumber to anchor your ceiling fan into. Uh, they have those ones that have like the metal bracket that spans across the between the joists, but nothing really beats screwing directly into wood when you're hanging a ceiling fan. So if that's what that's for, I think that's a pretty good box to possibly choose. I okay, made it over to the kitchen area here. So we have all of our typical kitchen circuits. Uh, all of our yellow wire is gonna be our 20 amp circuits serving the countertop. And then we also have that big black wire there, I believe it's an 8.3 for a 40 amp uh, electrical or a range circuit. And that range box is anchored right down next to the floor. And then right here in the middle of the kitchen, there's a couple more uh, just, the, I don't know what do you call those style boxes, just a flat box. Uh, they're super shallow, they're only like a half inch deep. And then you can just screw them directly to the stud, which sometimes allow you to like get it centered on the room if you have like a, a piece of wood that's right in the way and you can't get your box centered. You can use one of those and it works pretty well. We've got uh, general purpose receptacles that are spaced out nicely. Uh, some of them are on 20 amp circuits, like the ones that have yellow wire running to them right here. But quite a few of the rooms just have 15 amp circuits, like these ones right here. You can see it's just a white cable, so that's going to be a 15 amp circuit on a 14 gauge wire. So um, my preference personally is to run all of your receptacles on 20 amp circuits and then run separate circuits for your lighting. Uh, but that's totally a matter of opinion, and if you run your lights and receptacles together, totally fine. Uh, but it's uh, not really nice to have to use 12 gauge wire for your lighting. So if you want to have 20 amp circuits uh, for your receptacles, then it kind of makes sense to separate your lighting and your receptacle circuits. For all of the lights that have... Uh that are on the same circuit or the same light switch. You can see the cable just comes in and then goes back out again. Over to the next one, the next one, the next one, and the next one, next one. This is the last one on that, that run right there. Here we have a couple of uh, 12 gauge wires coming up into uh, what I'm assuming is above the bathroom vanity here. So that's nice. Oh, okay, this is kind of a cool thing to point out. So you see how that, those wires are just up and down like that? That's actually done on purpose. And what they're doing with that is uh, you, you don't really know for sure where your lighting fixtures will be in the bathroom usually. So they haven't decided on the style fixture, don't really know exactly where it's going to be on the wall. So instead of having to choose right away and mounting a box in here, uh, you can run this much extra cable this cable dead ends right over here on this end and you can run that in the wall and when you come back and the homeowners have finally decided where they want their lights you just cut the hole put one of those um, remodel boxes or whatever they call them that clamp onto the drywall you can install that and then reach up in there and grab your wire and pull it down and there's enough wire going through here that you can do that as many times as you need to. So you put one over there and then splice those wires together and then do it down there as well. So you kind of leave that accordion of wire in the wall and that gives you some flexibility for when you actually want to install the fixtures. You can see how there's quite a bit of extra wire that's pulled into all these boxes, sticking out a good extra foot, you know. Um, so that gives you some flexibility. It's always better to just use a little bit of extra wire rather than to have not enough for whatever reason, but you usually do end up cutting these off just like uh, approximately six inches outside of the outer face of the box. You can see right here they did double up the uh, the cables here underneath the staple that is allowable to put up to two regular cables underneath a single staple and right here you can kind of see how they ended up having to go underneath this uh, window here uh, from that receptacle over there and they just come down kind of angled down and across and and then back up again and you just need to leave yourself enough space so that you have room to get a staple in there to anchor that wire. Here is a little closet right here. Uh, they did put the closet light switch on the outside. So there's the box. And if you look right up here, there is a light box. It's mounted right centered 
above the closet opening. That's a good spot to put it. That's where I put them in my house. You can even run it in such a way where you have a switch on either end of the closet if it's a really big one. I will link in a card to the video I sh explain the wiring setup in my closet. Now also in the at in the upstairs here where the attic is going to be directly above here, they have opted to not use uh, recessed lights. I kind of like that idea because you don't have that big opening going up into the ceiling potentially creating a big spot where air could leak through and you have to make sure you get insulation over up, up over the top of that. So if you use a standard box like this, they have a lot of really low profile, super thin LED lights that basically look like recessed lighting. So if you're uh, putting them, putting fixtures in in a place, in a space where you have an attic above you, it might be a good idea just to put regular round boxes in uh, with the with the ceiling gaskets on them because you probably have less air leakage that way. Now I don't know for sure what's going on here, but it uh, looks like to me that they're maybe going to be installing some kind of a fluorescent fixture where the wire comes, or I mean probably LED actually, but a, a surface mount fixture where you uh, tie that electrical uh, connection in to the fixture itself. So they're not having to install boxes for all of these. They're just stubbing the wires down. You can see how they just made a continuous run and then went down, folded it over, came back up, across, back down, and did the same thing over and over again here in this room. You could always install a box later if you needed to, but I'm pretty sure that's probably what's going on here. So that's pretty much all the observations that I made about this uh, rough and wiring project. I hope this gave you some ideas and just uh, general information on what a rough in project looks like. Uh, if there's anything that you noticed that I didn't notice, put it in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the different methods or things that you may have done the same or done differently. I've made a playlist of electrical videos, so if you want to see more, click on that playlist and we'll see you over there in just a few seconds. Thanks a ton for watching and we'll see you right over there.